Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to NJ Thrive Small Business Webinars. You are attending one of our weekly webinars created to help New Jersey small businesses, owner, small business owners start, grow, and thrive. Today is Thursday, March 30th, and you are joining our weekly webinars as stated, and you're in for an exciting topic today. I'm your host, Uzma Sheikh. I'm a project coordinator for the NJSBDC, and welcome to this. If you can hear me properly, if you can see me properly, please put a one in our chat. Uh, thank you to those who are letting us know. Um, if you are having any issues, please definitely let us know, um, and we will do our best to help you. Also, since this is a webinar and our chat section is open, feel free to network. So feel free to, you know, promote yourself. Tell us what you do, um, what your business is, any socials, any email, phone number, anything that you'd like to share, uh, feel free to. All right, so to tell you who we are, uh, we are America's New Jersey Small Business Development Centers Network. That's what the acronym stands for, NJSBDC. A little mouthful, but... Um, Got, gets the job done, NJSBDC. Um, what is it? A statewide program powered by the SBA, which stands for the Small Business Administration, and statewide partners to help small businesses in New Jersey with three things. So no cost small business consulting. And I do repeat, it is at no cost. Training and events starting at $0, just like this one. And exclusive small business resources. All right. And the map you see over here are where our local regional SBDCs are located. So again, a statewide program indeed. What are you in for today? What are you expecting? So we have an agenda. So we'll go through some of our headlines in the small business community that has happened in the past week or will be happening. We have our presentation. So we'll go through that. And then at the end, we'll have a Q&A. All right. So we have a couple of headlines to go through today. I'll make sure to be quick. And all these headlines that I will be talking about will be shared in the chat. So if you are interested and would like to um, learn more, since I'll just go through them very briefly, please go click on the links and get caught up. So first one is a press release from the SBA. It says US Small Business Administration announces 2023 Explorer of the Year. This is done annually and um, they announced just recently on the 27th who their exporter of the year is and that is I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly sign six it's headquartered in North Carolina and they will be recognized during our national small business week that's coming up and what scientist sign six um, does is that they use I believe they've used their SBA step grant program to accomplish their exporting mission. Moving on to the next headline, it says US Small Business Administration announces Small Business Investment Companies of the Year. Also very cool. And they're announcing that the Stonehenge Community Impact Fund has, has been named um, the 2023 Small Business Investment Company part of the National Small Business Week again. Uh, they will be recognized on Sunday, April 30th and Monday, May 1st. And this is something that happens every year, the National Small Business Week and small businesses um, get recognized from each state or like they're nominated. So who knows, you could be one of them. Always keep an eye out for these things. Um, third one is registration open for National Small Business Week virtual summit taking place in May. This is virtual, so definitely recommend um, attending if you're interested. And SBA and SCORE mentors to America's small businesses, just like this, NJSBDC, uh, announced registration. It's open. It's a two-day online event taking place on May 2nd and 3rd. Attendance is free of charge. So there you go but you do have to register and to register, you can just go to this link. All right. Our fourth one is from NJEDA and to host CPACE program information session. 
This is the Garden State Commercial Property Assessed Clean Energy Program. That's what C Space stands for. On April 14th at 10 a.m., it's a session, so you'll have to register most likely. And it's an overview of the draft CPACE program guidelines. So if your small business qualifies for this, we highly recommend that you um, go register. And what it is for is to provide a new form of financing to New Jersey, New Jersey property owners for renewable energy, energy efficiency, water conversation, conservation, and certain types of resiliency-related improvements. So this is eligible for commercial, industrial, agricultural, and certain multifamily residential real property owners. So something cool, definitely take a look at that. And our last one is, it's a Eventbrite event. So you can go, it's a viewing party for America's Real Deal contestant, Tanya Torres. So a small business, um, definitely go support and watch Tanya Torres and her innovative mobile, mobile beauty business glam truck warriors. So it's, it's a little cool little thing that um, you could also participate in. So keep an eye out for that. All right, a lot of information. Moving on, things to keep in mind. So there will be a Zoom bar if you hover. If it's not there permanently, just hover with your mouse um, on your phone or your computer screen and you'll see a Q&A box and you'll see a chat section. So chat section is already where we're seeing our audience participate, but that's like for common comments, um, you know, any anything to share that you would like to share. But the Q&A session that we'll have at the end, we would like to pose your questions there so we don't miss anything and we'll take care of them at the end. This webinar that we'll have our presenter share will be available if you complete a three minute survey and that presentation will be available to you. Also, just to let you guys know, this webinar is being recorded and it will be available on our website and that link will also be shared. All right, so we have uh, David joining us today, who's a life insurance specialist and for life insurance strategies for small business owners, definitely recommend we have a good turnout today. So excited to see David. David, please come on. Let's get this show started. Share your screen, your audio, video, and thank you so much for coming on today. Hey, thank you, Uzma. Thank you for the introduction, and thank you for having me uh, be a speaker with your organization. Of course. I hope everybody's doing well, and I hope I can give you some uh, important insight on how you can use life insurance in your business and why is it important. So with that, I'm going to uh, share my screen with you. And, mm -hmm. uh, we'll get on with this presentation. Perfect. All right. So uh, my name is David Chang. Uh, that's my contact information. Um, feel free to take that down. Uh, that's my personal email. If you have any questions or you want to reach out, feel free to give me a call. My background is uh, I started in 1990 after I graduated uh, the university uh, in a brokerage firm. I stayed with one firm for 23 years. Um, and then uh, during the whole offshoring um, event where they were offshoring jobs uh, overseas, um, I was reworked, I was uh, laid off, and uh, I went and got my master's in risk management. Um, after graduating, that's where I landed a um, I became a registered rep with a major insurance company. So basically right now, my, my specialty is life insurance, which, which is the topic that we will be speaking about today. But I also specialize in long-term care, retirement planning, disability, and tax diversification, which we'll touch a little bit on today. When we're talking about life insurance, there are four common questions that need to be answered and, and that we will be covering today. Why do you need life insurance? How much life insurance should you, should you have? And what kinds of life insurance is there available to buy? The different types of insurances. And then how does life insurance fits into 
your business and how can you how can you fit it in? The first question is why do you need life insurance? If you think about it, we insure our cars, our homes, and our property, but we often overlook insuring our most valuable and important asset, which is you. Without you, 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 you can't generate income and, and you will not have the car, the home, and the business. The business is solely run on your human life value. So, you know, without you, the business or your family will not be able to continue their lifestyle. So most people will overlook having their, having life insurance. And uh, there is a, a big shortfall on, on that. Even if somebody is um, insured through their job, most employee uh, insurances only will cover you one to two, two times your salary. You can get more, but you would have to go through underwriting and that insurance is not portable. So in the event that you're changing jobs or you're in between jobs, that, that sh insurance most likely will not be portable, right? So we're gonna go into um, how much insurance you should have. Uh, there is a personal calculation. There's basic rules of thumb where um, you, you cannot insure have insurance more than your human life value. And how do you calculate that? So for example, you, you would take your current salary and you will multiply it times the amount of years you have left to work. So let's say you're 40, 40, old, you're 40 years old and you plan to retire at age 65. You would just take that salary and multiply it times 25 that number will be the maximum amount of insurance you can purchase. You can also calculate the insurance by saying, hey, I want my beneficiary to be able to continue their lifestyle. So let's say uh, an ind individual needed $100,000. Your annual salary is 125, but you can get by on $100,000 a year. You would just take that number divided by uh, a conservative rate of return, let's say 4%. And then that will give you a number that you will need $2.5 million to be able to live with $100,000 per year uh, per year for the rest of your life. So that would be what you would need for the rest of your life, or you can calculate insurance for your immediate cash needs. How do you do that? One thing is to go to a reputable insurance agent, okay? Uh, one that holds uh, their fiduciary responsibilities to you, right? So that means that we have to take your best interest uh, first, all right? And so, you know, you, you have, it's like everything else. You have to find uh, an honest, uh, ethical person to be able to sell you your, your insurance. Um, how I would do it is, uh, you know, ask a lot of questions uh, and on like your your business plan, your, your general ledger or your tax form or your balance sheet, the number that I give you is I have an explanation for. There is logic, and uh, if I need, if you need two million, three million, or one million, I will tell you why and how I came up to that number. Um, most, you know, you want to be careful of somebody who just wants to sell you a million dollar policy. Um, you may need one point five. You may need one point eight. So it's best that somebody sits with you and gives you a accurate calculation of the insurance that you need. Another way and a really good way to figure out the proper amount of insurance you will need is uh, going to your accountant, your CPA. And I, I, I use this analogy, if you had to go to a, uh, if you had to go to major surgery, what, it, what, it, what is it recommended? 
you go to another doctor and you get a second opinion. So my recommendation is that you don't just rely on your insurance agent, always get a second opinion and a, a great place to get your second opinion on the, the amount of insurance you need is to your accountant. Your accountant knows everything about your finances, uh, your financial needs. So they will be able to say, hey, yes, that sounds like about right. So an excellent place to get a second opinion is maybe a financial advisor, uh, some, some, somebody that handles your stock account, but I, I think, uh, or your lawyer, uh, your attorney that you're working with, but uh, I always recommend getting a second opinion. Don't just rely on your insurance agent. Okay. So that's how you would calculate, um, get an uh, accurate account uh, calculation on your insurance. Just some basic rules of thumb on a personal calculation. Like I said, you take your annual salary and multiply it times the amount of years you have left to work. Or you can say, hey, uh, this uh, get, a, get a number where you, you're comfortable leaving your beneficiaries. You divide that by the percentage, uh, rate of return that you can get from uh, you know, an annuity or uh, an investment, say three, four, or five percent, divide it, and then that will give you an estimated amount of what you will need. To, to be able to live off the uh, returns on the life insurance money. Next, you know, what type of insurance are, are there? Um, there's two basic types, there's a term and there's a permanent policy. Uh, the temporary policies are most likely terms and term policies are, are is exactly what it sounds like. They will only insure you for a particular period of time. And there are different types of term policies. So depending on your need, um, you know, there are uh, term policies where it, it rises every year according to your age. Um, so those policies are generally very uh, affordable and lower has a lower premium. But it only has um, savings for the first seven years. After seven years, they can be they can become expensive. So, example, I would probably you know uh, sell that to somebody who maybe needs the insurance for five years. You know, uh, a, a person saying that okay, my child's going to be um, twenty one years old in five years and. They should be fine by that time, so I, I won't need that insurance after that. Um, the yearly rising insurance is always, um, I, I would uh, recommend that for people who are not ready for the permanent policy and, and kind of on the fence of buying a permanent policy. Um, that's an excellent way to um, convert over to a permanent policy. But bear in mind, Anything past the seven, seventh year, it does become more expensive. The other term policies uh, that there are out there is that you can buy a 10-year term, a 15-year term, and a 20-year term. And there's some firms that will sell a 30-year term. A term policy is a temporary policy where they will insure you for that particular time that you, you buy the insurance for. 10, 15, 20, or 30 years. Um, that means that they will guarantee you that premium for that amount of time, right? You can go past that time, but your premium is only guaranteed not to rise and to be at that, that stated premium, say $100 a month or $75 a month. It's only going to be guaranteed for that period of time that you're insured for. Anytime after that, that insurance premium will be based on your age, based on your age. And as you get older, the insurance will go up. So how insurance is calculated is it takes into account your age, your health. So when you, when you apply for the insurance, you're gonna have to, you will have to go through underwriting. So, they will ask you all the risk questions. Uh, you know, they, they will look into your driving record, your credit score, um, 
your habits, you know, do you jump out of airplanes, do you ride a motorcycle, uh, do you smoke? Um, and they're going to ask you all these d different risk questions, and that's how they will determine the premium that they will charge you. So with insurance, if, if you're young, your insurance is going to be cheap. But if you're getting insurance at the age of like 55, it's going, the premium is going to be higher because you're closer to um, your mortality rate. So the average uh, mortality rate is age 88. So uh, bear in mind when you're getting the insurance, the sooner the better. And also when you're younger, you have your health. So if there's any pre-existing conditions, like if you have, uh, if you're diabetic or pre-diabetic, high blood pressure, have a, you know, uh, a history, the insurance will increase. Uh, or you may not be insurable. Uh, I know most insurance companies will not take anybody who is pre-diabetic, or if you're diabetic, you probably will de be denied coverage. So it's always best to get the insurance while, you, while you're insurable. All right, so that's the temporary insurance. Uh, another thing is the temporary insurance is pure insurance. It's only going to pay if you die. Uh, so statistically, only 2% of the term policies pay out. You don't want to be part of the 2%, but it's just that protection you need so you can protect your family or your business or business partner. So it's, it's uh, something that is needed. It's the most affordable way to, to be insured. Premiums are cheaper. The other insurance is that you have a permanent policies and those permanent policies uh, is uh, commonly known as whole life. There's also a universal life and a variable life. Be careful here. Um, anything, any insurance product that says variable, anything that has variable in front of it, the risk is on the policyholder. The risk is on you. Why? Because the part of the premium is going into the market. All right. So you bear that risk of, uh, of the market. So if you are a risk taker, or if you have a high risk tolerance, a variable product may be a good product for you. The universal life is basically a, uh, I would, best way for me to describe it is, is a, uh, a longer term. You know, it goes into your 80s and you can design it to, to insure yourself up to age 90. And then uh, the whole life is an insurance product. It has guarantees. Um, uh, so, you know, the whole life, the premium will probably substantially uh, be substantially higher uh, than the other products, or definitely higher than the the, the, the uh, temporary term policy. All right. So we're going to go into a little bit of each of the products. So it's basically, if you want to keep it simple, you have a temporary or a permanent. One is not better than the other in your business. It may be. Uh, as to speak to the agent, then, and, and, and the agent should be able to uh, provide you with a good product or blend of products for you. All right. So, if you're new in your business and you don't have the uh, finances, you're, you're, you're growing, you know, it's okay to start with the term. And most terms you can, uh, most firms, you can uh, convert over to a permanent policy. Bear in mind, I just wanted to say, when you do a whole life policy, uh, uh, put this in your notes, it's very, very important. When you do a whole life policy, it's best to go with a mutual company. A mutual company. Uh, the difference between a mutual company and a, uh, a stock company, uh, I can't, I don't want to mention any names of any particular companies, but uh, a stock company is going to uh, have the interest of a shareholder, people who buy their stock. They're going to place those investors first. A mutual company is not traded 
on the market. It's not on the exchange. So all the profits of a mutual company will be shared with policyholders and policy policyholders of whole life. So policyholders of whole life are entitled to dividends, and those dividends are paid for through that insurance company's performance. So that's really important that if you pick and you go with a whole life policy, make sure you pick a mutual company. They're the best uh, for you to get those dividends, participating dividends, and, uh, and, and to grow that cash value in that permanent policy. So here are uh, temporary ben uh, the benefits of um, uh, or the uh, description of a term policy. You know, it provides benefit as long as you pay the premium. It will protect you for critical periods. So again, if you only need the insurance for 10, 15, 20 years, you can pick that time frame. And it, again, it's the most, it may be the most economical way to start and to protect your business, but it may cost more in the long run. So like I said, if you still need that insurance and now you're age 55, 60, that insurance is, that term policies, the premium is going to be higher than if you were in your 30s. There is no cash value, right? And the premium is a cost item. So uh, there is no cash value. It's a, it's it's basically think about it. Uh, you want to compare it to your auto insurance. You you pay auto insurance every year just just to have that protection just in case you get into an accident. But after that year, clean record, no accidents. Thank God, no no uh, incident. Uh, the insurance company is not going to return any any of that premium back to you. So uh, temporary insurance, term insurance is pure insurance. It's only going to protect you if an event happened and that event would, and life insurance would be your death. And going on into the permanent policy, um, you know, and, and, and today we'll be talking about whole life. Um, permanent policy provides a death benefit as long as the pay, premium is paid. You know, like everything else, you have to pay your bills. Uh, it's a permanent solution. So it's not if you die, it's when you die. So this is this is going to be for your whole life. You are insuring your whole life. Um, the cost is initially higher than term. You know, when, if I if I were to price and, and run you a quote for a term policy for a million dollar versus a permanent policy for a million dollars, um, the premium will be uh, drastically different. Uh, higher, okay. Um, but again, in the long run, it's more affordable, and you have benefits. There are uh, there are many many benefits to having a whole life permanent policy. It builds cash value, so part of the premium is going into a savings. A portion of the premium is being created as an asset. So if uh, you are a business owner. And you can actually borrow money from yourself. If the cash value is there, you can take the money out and borrow it against uh, your life insurance. And you necessarily won't always have to go to a bank for uh, extended credit or uh, you know take a loan out. You can take the loan out versus yourself, much like your 401k plan. Um, The other benefits of a whole life policy is a you know, guaranteed death benefit. Your premium is never to increase. So basically, once you are issued your whole life policy, that premium is set. And then and the whole life policies can be designed to whether you can say, hey, I want to I want to be done paying this up in 10, 15 years. That would be a custom whole life. Uh, you have guaranteed cash value growth. Okay, so this is an insurance product. There are guarantees. Remember, in the variable product, there is no guarantees because the money is in the market and we can never guarantee the market, right? You can never guarantee anybody returns in the market. That would be illegal and unethical. 
but no, whole life is an insurance policy. So uh, there are guarantees in whole life. There are additional growth through dividends. So again, make sure that you do a whole life policy with a mutual company. A mutual company will share their profits and, and performance with policyholders of whole life. They're not going to uh, share those dividends with stockholders because there is no stock. They, they, they don't issue stock to investors, All right? There's tax deferred uh, cash value growth. Um, your death benefit in the event that you pass away when it goes to your beneficiary is tax-free. The benefit of the life insurance when, when the person dies, the benefit usually goes to the beneficiaries tax-free. Okay, there are some instances where you have to pay tax, but it's very, you know, in most common cases, it's tax-free. You have tax-free access to cash values. And here's something that's really important for um, business owners or anybody who has a whole life policy. It's protected from creditors. So they can, you know, if, if, if creditors or if you get sued, somebody wants to go after you, they can go after your home. They can go after your uh, brokerage account. Uh, they can go after your bank accounts. Believe me, they will go after everything, but they cannot touch your life insurance. All right, so your permanent policy that has cash value is protected from creditors. So some common things uh, that, that you can use life insurance for your business. So like I said in the beginning, uh, if you're the main provider of your business, um, you, you want to protect your human life value, your ability to earn income, to provide for your family. The most common um, uses for life insurance in businesses are buy-sell agreements. So uh, I don't know how most of everybody's business is uh, uh, set up. If it's a sole proprietor, an LLC, a partnership, a buy-sell agreement is normally um, if you have a partner, you will have insurance on each other. So in order to have insurance and to insure somebody, you have to have insurable interest. Since you are in business together, there is an insurable interest there. So if you have a, uh, a partner, you, you can buy insurance on your partner's life, your business partner's life. And why you will want to do that is that in the beginning of your business venture or your agreement, you have to say, hey, if one of the partners die unexpectedly, what will happen to the other half of the business? Obviously, it will be willed to his or hers beneficiary. So now that business partner will be in business with a family member that may not be able to step into the shoes of the partner that just died. So the buy-sell agreement says that if one partner dies, the other partner will be have the right to buy and take the other half of the business. That insurance money will be used to pay for uh, the business. That money will go to the beneficiaries of the deceased beneficiaries, if that makes sense. So again, really important to get a, a good accountant because as your business grows, you're, you're going to want to have the accountant um, value your business, validate the business and value it, uh, run a valuation on it so you can have the proper amount of insurance. So those are uh, buy-sell agreements. If you have a partner, you want to have insurance on each other and have that buy-sell agreement in the event that one person passes. Um, that that business will be bought out by the other half and the proceeds will be given to the beneficiaries of the deceased. Business planning, you know, there's uh, several business strategies uh, that we have for uh, permanent policies where, you know, if you have cash on the books or reserve money that you don't need right away and you can, you can say, hey, I can, um, 
do without it for 10 years. You can do a 10, 10 year of custom whole life policy that builds cash value. You have to do uh, the benefit of the leverage of the death benefit, right? So uh, there is a death benefit uh, uh, attached to that. So say if it's a million dollar policy and you're paying $10,000 a month for that policy for 10 years, you know, six months into that policy, you paid $60,000, partner dies, the firm gets a million dollars. That's a million dollar policy. So you have that leverage of that death benefit. And then if you don't die, you have the cash value and that, that life insurance that's all paid up. And if you need that loan or the business needs that, that money, you can dip into that life insurance policy as a loan or take out some of the cash value to, to fund your business. Estate planning. When you're having a business, um, again, you you will have beneficiaries. And you know, take for example, uh, a family-owned business um, that has three children, and child A becomes a doctor, child B goes and becomes a lawyer. Uh, child C is the one that stays in the family business and pretty much runs the business. Um, mom and pop dies. You know how do they how do they will that business? One one particular they may want to will that business to continue that business to child C. Where does that leave child A and B? Well, you know you buy a life insurance policy and say, hey, child C gets the business, child A and B gets the insurance money. So you equalize the estate, you know, so there's no arguing, there's no fighting, and everybody's happy. So yeah, those are things that you might want to consider when you're having a business and when you grow your business or, or depending on what stage of business that you, you're in. Another uh, a financial uh, insurance strategy is a key person's insurance. So as your business grows, you may uh, it, it, key person's insurance is, is one way to kind of, um, in, you know, try to encourage and to uh, maintain uh, keeping good employees. Okay, so you don't want a lot of turnover or there's a key person that really runs your business and is really uh, uh, somebody valuable to you and you want to keep them and you don't want them to just, you know, one day resign and walk away. You buy key per person's insurance. So basically, if that person were to die, um, you will have that money to go out and recruit and replace them. Uh, the key person's insurance, you can also use it as uh, depending on uh, your your business plan and, and their benefits that you offer to your, your employees and say, hey, you know, if, if you stay with me for 10 years, uh, I have this permanent life insurance policy um, out on you. Um, you, you'll get to keep this after five or 10 years. Or as the owner, you can say, hey, if you stay with me for 10, 20 years, I have this cash value that I can give you as a pension. You know, there's, so there's a lot of ideas that you can have with the insurance. Now, let's say if that person decides to still quit and transfer, you know, you, you're the owner of it. So the, you still own that insurance policy. And you can write, put on a rider where you can transfer to another person. Now, when you do that, bear in mind that that person uh, will have to go through underwriting. So anybody that you're insurance going, insuring will have to go through underwriting. That means, you know, they would have to go in, answer all the risk questions, uh, go in for a physical, blood, urine, uh, uh, blood and fluids will be taken, um, height and, and measurement. So insurance is based on your health, your age and your health. So whoever is getting insurance will have to go through that underwriting process. So uh, these, those are uh, some of the, uh, the three, the, the main um, uses of biz, uh, insurance and in businesses. And so with that, um, you know, 
we can, you know, I, I am done with my presentation and, and I'll be happy to take any uh, questions or, or uh, that anybody may have. Thank you, David, for right. all that helpful, very helpful and good information. Um, yeah, we have questions coming in. Some of the questions we have are in the Q&A and the chat. So I'll try to go through the Q&A first, and then we'll take a look at the chat. So we have Frederick who asks, I heard many people speaking about becoming your own bank. They do this through life insurance. I read Walt Disney used his insurance policy to open up Disney World. Is it possible to use life insurance to do this? Well, they're probably talking about that whole life policy that 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 I'm speaking of, but it takes time for that cash value to grow. Because remember, it's a life insurance policy. So you cannot forget that it's a life insurance policy. It's insuring your life. So there's a cost of insurance there, right? So just kind of like your mortgage, a lot of the, the cost of the insurance is going to be in the front end. It mm -hmm. will take time for that cash value to grow. But, you know, so somebody like this, I don't know the history of, of what you were talking about. Disney was funded by a life insurance policy or, or using it as a bank. But when you grow that life insurance policy and you have that cash value, you can tap into that cash value tax-free. So this is this is one way that you can become tax diversified. That's interesting. Good to know. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it grows tax free and you take it out tax free. So it acts very much, you know, like, you know, that's the benefit of a Roth IRA, but the Roth IRA has limitations, right? If you make certain uh, over a certain amount of money, you can't participate in a Roth IRA unless you do a backdoor Roth. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, with the Roth, Roth IRA, if you take it out before you're 59 and a half, it's going to be extreme, uh, heavily penalized, you know, barring the exceptions that, you know, hardship. And there, there are some exceptions that you can take it out prior to 59 and a half, but there are limitations that you have with a, with a, a Roth IRA. With a life insurance policy, you can take out the cash value anytime as long as the cash value is there. But just bear in mind, in the first initial years of, of funding this life insurance policy, the cash value will not be there because you're, you're, you're going to fund the cost of insurance in there. Just kind of like your mortgage or, you, or your bank loan, you, you, you know, your, your car note, you're paying off the interest first before you pay off any of the principal. Right, right. I hope that okay. answers your question. Yeah, I hope that answered your question, Frederick, uh, let us know if you have more to add to that. Um, next question is from Matt. And Matt asks, what is the difference between talking to an insurance agent versus talking to a broker? Oh, OK. If you're, if you're talking to an agent, uh, the agent might be just representing one firm. And they're going to sell their firm's product. An insurance broker will have access to different types of insurance through different companies, and you know they're going to go out there and price the you know, the the best product for you. Gotcha. Okay. Right, so that's kind of like with anything else, you know, like a, a broker, you know, will you know go out to different uh, you know carriers. And try to find the best deal. Like if you do your auto insurance, you know, a broker will go out and go out, you know, say, hey, insurance company A has a their insurance company A, B, and C. Okay, comparable uh, coverage, you know, million dollar policy, and you know, this one's a little cheaper and affordable, right? Um, so a broker will go out there and then try to price the best product for you. Um, again, it. so if you're going to go with a permanent policy, you want to go with a company that's uh, another thing is when you go in with a whole life policy, guys, make sure you go with a mutual company, but now also look into the financial strength of that company and their dividend performance. Good stuff. All yeah. right. 
Moving on to the next question from Lisa. She, Lisa asks, if someone takes out a loan against the insurance policy, what is the interest rate and how long do you have to repay it? So that, that's a really good question. So that would depending that would be dependent on the uh, carrier and the uh, terms of that policy, right? And so you can design the uh, policy to either take loans and you don't have to repay it, um, or you can repay it as you go. So you can take money uh, and fund it in. There's no time limit. To, to how you have to fund it. However, you want to leave. So this is why you have to have a um, a, a good agent uh, that, that's always looking out for your interests. You you can take the money out, uh, the cash value out, but if if you don't, if you take if you if you dip into it too many times and you and and their cash value is not enough to cover the cost of insurance that policy can fall apart and collapse. It can lapse. And you do not want your insurance policy to lapse. If your insurance policy lapse, remember we were saying that it grows tax-free and you can take it out tax-free. It's no longer tax-free if you let the policy lapse. So you have to make sure that you, 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 when you take the loan out, that you're not taking it out a, 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 you know, a large value of it, or you know, you're not taking out an amount that's going to cause the policy to lapse. You do not want your insurance policy to lapse. If you if it lapses, then there is tax consequences. Got it. Um, our next question is from anonymous. Anonymous anonymous asks, "I have an insurance policy, but I pay for it myself." How can I get my business to pay for it? The agent said I had to pay for it personally when she set up the policy. Um, yeah, well, you, you, well, I mean, the, the insurance policy was purchased and you're the owner. Um, so I don't know what type of insurance policy is. Is it a permanent or is it a term? Um, if you want to try to get the business to to uh, take over that insurance policy, then they will become the owner. You know, like uh, I don't, I don't think you want to give that up. Um, um, I don't know if you're are you an employee or your business partner. Um, I, you know, it depends on 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 your on your status with that business. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So. So. Yeah, so most um, employers, you know, you, you know, you so there's insurance where you 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 buy individually, you go through the full underwriting process. Then there are insurance companies where they will, you know, for business when your business grows, you might want to offer life insurance as one of the benefits. One of the benefits of getting life insurance through your job is that they're non-discriminatory. You, you know, you know, you can have. You know, somebody who's old, young, uh, fit, not fit, um, they, they have to provide that insurance. But the ma majority of those insurances is, is, is very cheap because, you know, it, it's through the company and they're giving it this company rate, but it's not portable. So if, once you get laid off, you know, you can't take that insurance with you. So, and they, and they will only insure you for one, two times your salary. And that probably will not meet your insurance need. Like I said, if you do right. the calculation, you know, it's going to fall very, very short, but it's good. It's, it's the cheapest insurance you're going to get, but there are some downfalls. So um, just to share something personally, my, my sister just recently passed away very young, uh, sick. And so nobody plans on being sick. Nobody plans on dying. Her company was she she almost lost her employee life insurance because she was a few days from being put from short term disability to long term disability. But if she were to be put onto long term disability, all her benefits from the company would have been severed to include the life insurance. Got it. All right. Yeah. So 
you know, benefits for having uh, employee insurance, and there are very uh, there there are some shortfalls. So this is why you should you know have your. It's always a good idea to diversify and have your own insurance policy. Gotcha. Thank you for sharing, David. Sorry for your loss. Yeah. Um, so I'll. I know David. So just to let everyone know, David has a hard stop at one. So don't want to take up your time. So I think we'll conclude here. Yes. Um, I'll, let's just go quickly back to your first or your second slide where you shared your contact information. So I just recommend everyone, you know, we do have a lot more questions coming in now. So if you have questions, please feel free to reach out to David at the contact information shared. Quickly take a picture of it, um, write it down. Um, you have 30 seconds to do it before I share the screen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, all right, so, all right, hopefully that's taken. Um, our webinar assistant, Glory, if you can just pass that down in the chat as well. I need to share my screen. And we'll conclude our webinar um, for today. So I just have a couple of things to go through. We just concluded our Q&A. If you're still sticking around, just to let you know that we always have upcoming webinars scheduled for either weekly or like every two weeks. So definitely recommend taking out your phone, scan the QR code. Our webinar next Thursday is on April 6th. It's with Ryan Silvestri, one of our capital team consultants, and it's how to start a successful business from zero. So we always have webinars like these going on to uh, so anyone you know if you already have an existing business if you'd like to attend please feel free to but if anyone's new to you know starting um, their own small business or if you know someone then definitely pass this information forward it always helps to go back to the basics right and again just to remind you of who you are if you're new um, we've helped about 15,000 plus small businesses grow, um, no cost small business consulting. So if you'd like to come in, go to ngsvc.com, request counsel counseling. It's at no cost, um, training and events just like this one. So we do webinars or some of our regional centers do in-person, um, events now that we can do them again and exclusive small business resources. Again, thank you so much for coming. Um, we're going to sign out here. It's 1254. Thank you all um, for attending. And thank you, David, so much for your um, presentation. Have a good day. Bye. Great. Thank you for having me. Thank you, guys. Have a great day.